Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is what I like to say, the coolest guy in the room. But before we get to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, are you properly caffeinated for today's podcast? I'm ready to go, Mark. I'm ready. I'm ready. Today's podcast is sponsored by tlfolio.com, which does not stand for Tate Litchfield, by the way. It does not stand it for that, but it's funny that people that. think that it is. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't. But sell your notes and get paid. It's pretty much unlimited funds. Um, learn more at tlfolio.com. Let's talk to our guest. His name is Odile de, Bas- Odile de Bastos. Yes, that's his real name. He's a podcaster, a proud Gen Xer, and a digital marketing strategist for Houston-based creative marketing agency, Record with a K. His goal is to provide early stage solopreneurs and creative, simple, practical lessons that that Ozil has learned along his extensive creative journey. His mission is to share his journey with you of how to create, give, and help a community of entrepreneurial-minded individuals achieve their personal goals. And he knows what it's like spending endless hours researching, watching every webinar you can come across, and suffocating yourself with information. And uh, he's discovered the more you consume, the less you move forward with real action Ozeal, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Let's uh, let's rewind the clock, shall we? And by the way, and fantastic let- intro. I, I I have mad respect for podcast hosts that can rock an intro like that, Mark. And and that's the best intro I've heard so far, man. So uh, much respect, and I love it. Thanks, Ozeal. I, I appreciate that. I'm- Absolutely. By the way, my head just got really big. Uh, <laughs> it's growing. I see it, dude. Just, Scott, I know, Scott. Uh, you better keep my ego in check on this out, on this podcast. So it's, it's already slowed it down. Yeah, <laughs> you got it, man. Just get, keep it rolling, Mark. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. All right, all right, Ozil. <laughs> let Let's go to your let, let's Let's just talk about your big <laughs> aha moment. Yeah. Tell us about that and um, and what you learned from it. The big aha moment. Wow. Uh, let's Let's take it back. So. I, I was always, growing up, uh, I have a lot of memories, uh, fa- just being fascinated by musicians and performance. And so performance, uh, expressing myself creatively, uh, I was a break dancer, it was travel, and I was break dancing all over, had break dance crews, and, and was involved in performance, and, and I was always the shy kid, the shy break dancer in the circle that was the last one to kind of get out and show and bust a move. Uh, so it took me a while to kind of crack that shell. But well, one day there was this big dance battle, dance off. And uh, I decided to kind of get out there. And I was the last guy to get out. I was like, all right, man, well, it's your turn to go on. And I decided to just step out of my comfort zone and express myself. And I remember there was a lot of people watching and I, I was nervous as hell. But I went out there and, and just rocked it. And I remember everybody was like, you know, hollering and, and really just giving me a lot of respect. And it was kind of that aha moment that really uh, broke me out of that timid Ozeal uh, <laughs> shell and really kind of helped me get into that world of just, just expressing myself and being who I was. Uh, so it took me a while, but that was kind of the aha moment from a personal standpoint. And uh, that really kind of was, was the pivotal moment in, in kind of giving, getting me involved in, in business and, and getting involved in helping other people as well. So uh, breakdancing, breakdance battle actually got me. That was my aha moment to get out and do my thing. So, Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Our first breakdancer. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could breakdance. I don't know. It's a uh, it's cool story. So Ozil, how does that translate that getting out of your comfort zone, that sort of taking this, you know, let's say this hidden sort of talent, right. That a lot of people can't do, but um, you know, certainly uh, you know, judgment could be coming your way, whether positive or negative, 
right? right? And you just said, you know what, I'm going to be me. And then how does that translate to you today with your podcast, uh, No Permission Needed, and just the things that you're doing creatively? Right. So the name of the podcast, as you mentioned, is No Permission Needed. And it really was that moment where I had to give myself permission just to be myself. And it was a declaration. It was a statement that meant so much to me. And I remember getting out and seeing a lot of creatives struggle with being themselves, uh, embracing business, becoming creative entrepreneurs, uh, which back then uh, it was unheard of. You know, where we're just kind of the struggling artist. So that was uh, that's where it ties in. Uh, the no permission needed. Uh, it really ties into. Uh, myself being this timid teenager that was had so much potential had so much in him to express himself to the world and share so much with the world but i, I couldn't break that shell was always seeking validation seeking opinions and, and criticism and just a fear of that and i think that's something that relates to a lot of solopreneurs freelancers and entrepreneurs at an early stage where they kind of are seeking that validation are, are afraid to be themselves and and voice right to voice what they want to share with the world so uh, no permission it no permission needed is a declaration for those uh, timid, those shy entrepreneurs that in the beginning stages that don't know how to quite uh, be themselves. And I think that's important and not so much from the business standpoint, but from a personal development standpoint, which I think uh, goes hand in hand with entrepreneurship. So let's say Scott Todd comes to you mm -hmm. and he's, he's started this new company called TL Folio and he's insecure about it, right? Um, he wants to make a big splash, but then he's, he's got fears. He's got doubts. How do you help him break through? What would you say to Scott? I think it has to do with figuring out, pinpointing exactly what he's afraid of, but I think it's just kind of scaling back and, and helping him either write out or record. And that's the reason why, uh, Marcus Scott, I'm so passionate about this online media economy, this world that we have so many things, whether it's voicing what we want to share with the world with podcasting and other platforms, video, written word. And I think just writing things out uh, and just kind of writing the things out that he believes in his principles, his values. And I think just kind of peeling back the layers of that. I think it's a great start to kind of get somebody to a point where they can actually be themselves and, and really just Face on, just face the fears, head on, right? Face the dragon, face, face the thing that you're afraid of and attack it, attack it, whether if it's, uh, if you're afraid of sales, you know, asking for a discount, um, you know, afraid of marketing, kind of really stepping out and, and sharing that voice or that thing that you're trying to promote to people. And I think it's just facing that specific thing. So I think it goes back to just a lot of personal development and really pinpointing the thing that you're afraid of most and then attacking it head on. Scott, what are you most afraid of? Um, that's a great question. I don't, I don't know. You know, like, um, I don't know. Like, if you asked me, Mark, if you asked me like a, a year ago what I was afraid of, I'd, I'd say like uh, standing up on my own and, and kind of not, not having a corporate job today. Today, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess more of what I've, I fear is kind of like – uh, economy stuff or stuff that I can't manage at all. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's stuff that's outside of my, my, um, my control. And so then, you know, I just bring, I just come back to, I can only focus on the stuff that I can manage or I can control. And beyond that, I just have to react when something happens. I can't, I can't worry about unknown factors or, you know, for example, like the economy, you can't worry about that because what am I going to do about it? Mm -hmm. No, it's true. Ozil, what's your biggest fear? Oh, the biggest fear. Oh, great question, Mark. Um, sometimes I've, I think that one of the biggest struggles that I've actually faced up to this point, Mark and Scott, is just uh, really asking, you know, selling. I think a lot of creatives, uh, for the creatives that are listening, I think that's the biggest hurdle that we have to face uh, and we have to jump over is, is asking uh, for that sale saying, Hey, listen, would you like to purchase this? Uh, I remember early on, I was, uh, my first entrepreneurial uh, business was actually selling breakdance videos. I would go on a, you guys remember uh, AOL chats? Yeah. 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 Old school days, man. That was, you know, that was the way we connected and chatted with each other. So I remember trying to sell, uh, 
breakdance videos and I was very shy. I was always kind of like undervaluing. I was, I was getting like, I was building these relations with people, uh, breakdancers from all over the world, Japan, Germany, they would send me these videos. Uh, and at the time it was kind of illegal, but you know, whatever. It was my first little project. So I was selling them. I was dubbing them, selling them. But I remember just being afraid. I would give them away and people were like, dude, why sell them? You know, why are you, you know, why are you not selling these videos? They're international. They're, they're things that people want to buy here in the States. So I think that's kind of my biggest fear still and I, I still kind of struggle with is the sale um but i've gotten a lot better uh since then but i, I think that's probably one of the things that i think a lot of creatives uh, struggle with and i still somewhat struggle with again i've gotten a lot better but uh, it's always a challenge yeah i mean i think one of my biggest fears now is kind of like um you know i, I i'm at that kind of that point in my life now where you know, I have more than, more than enough, right? You know, I work when I want, where I, where I want, with whom I want. I have freedom. I have flexibility. I have all these amazing things. And so I think for me, the biggest fear is all of that kind of going away. And what does that look like? Could I, you know, how would I handle that? Right. right. Um, and so I, I think for me, what helps is actually, well, like what you said, is actually voicing it and leaning into it a bit and feeling it and then kind of going through this mental model. Well, what would, what would life be like? And at the end of it, not much different, honestly, yeah. <laughs> like right. I would figure it out. I've never figured it out a bunch of times. I'd figure it out again. I'd get on the phone with Scott Todd. We would brainstorm for a couple hours and boom, we're back. There it is. But, yeah. um, but it is the fear. I mean, Scott, you ever, you ever have that fear of, okay, I've got all the success, what happens if I lose it all? Yeah, I mean, like that's what I was saying about the uh, like the economy, for example. You know, like you you sit there and you think about, okay, well, man, what happens if the economy tanks? You know, like what what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you can't you can't live in fear of that because it's not you know like it, it's going to happen, right? Like it's just not it, like we know it's going to happen. So what can you do about it? Well, I can save some money, right? Like I can build build savings. Um, I can start to think about like, what, what is plan B? Like, what is plan B, right? Like, what's the backup plan? How, what, what game plan or strategy am I going to execute if this begins to happen? And, uh, you know, so you, I think you start to think about those types of things and then you can start to deal with kind of the unknowns. But if you're just focusing on like, oh man, I can't, I can't do it because man, the, the stock market's going to tank any day now boom, you, then you live in fear and you don't take action at all. But Mark, like what you said, like if something happens, then, then we brainstorm and then we take action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's the thing is that even, even in a, an uncertain world, which we, which we all live in, and there's so many things we can't control, you know, what we can control are our thoughts and our actions. Mm -hmm. And I think having that confidence can get you through a lot of things when you, when you embrace it. Yeah, um, true. Ozil, when what do you think of when you hear the word successful? I think of uh, being spiritually successful, uh, financially successful, but just also, I mean, those are just different elements, but the important thing is doing what you love and in pursuing the thing that you actually give yourself permission to pursue. And I think to me, that's success. Um, I've learned early on, Marcus Scott, that, that the money and I've never been a money chaser. I've always been a, just a bona fide creator where I really was always doing the thing that I love to do. And, you know, although I early on, I didn't accumulate a lot of financial wealth. Uh, there was a lot of spiritual and a lot of self-fulfillment that I got from doing the thing that I love to do. To me, again, uh, to answer your question specifically is success is doing what you love to do and being and owning it, being completely just satisfied with saying this is enough. And of course, there's a next level, but I'm going to embrace where I'm at now and then be present with it and just move forward. So that's, that's to me, the definition of success is just saying, this is, this is who I am now. This is what defines me right now. And uh, I'm evolving. And of course, it can change next year, but this is who I am. And just, again, owning it to me, I think that's success. All right. Well, Ozio, this is one of my favorite questions. Yeah. So you're having a dinner party. Mm. And you can invite any three people alive in the world right now. Whom would you invite and what one question 
would you ask each one of them? Man, that's a good one, Mark. Good question. That's one of those where I have to like, can I just stop and think? Who would I will? There's so many uh, people that I would probably reach out to. I'm trying to just three though. Woo. Oh man. You know what? I, I really admire from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Actually, no, I'll tell you what, I would be uh, Elon Musk. It's, it's your party, Ozil. I think Elon Musk would be like, Ozil, we're, come on, really? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, oh, I'm working 100 hours here to save the planet. Right, exactly, right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I'm working 100 hours and losing money every exactly, company I, I do. Know, right? <laughs> uh, You're serving this those deal? No, right. <laughs> I'm no, kidding. No. <laughs> I don't know. There's just so many That's things. I mean, just, you know, Elon well, Musk is great. So, okay, Elon Musk, assuming yeah. he'd be a good dinner guest. He right, would be a, a great dinner guest. Um, Oprah Winfrey. I, I, I would like to interview. Yeah, yeah, Oprah Winfrey. And uh, who else? Who else? Man, that's a tough one. Oh, ooh. I was I was gonna say if he was still alive, uh, Prince would have been because that was my idol, my my musical idol. So uh, all right, all right, let's resurrect Prince. You got Elon Musk, Oprah, and Prince. Yeah. What one question would you ask them? Oh, <laughs> Mark, this is such a great question. Um. It would probably have to be, uh, when was the moment when you decided, when you gave yourself permission uh, to do the thing that you love? That would be it. I, I love that pivotal moment. I think that that is a great question because it, to me, it, it opens up uh, the floodgates of, of their story and it really kind of pinpoints um, where, where, what were they thinking and in that moment where they conquered fear. And, and decided to do their own thing. So yeah, that would be the question. I like it. I like it. Thank you. Um, Who would you pick, Mark? I'm curious. Three people? Three people. Um, I would probably invite, you're going to be so, I, I just haze you about oh. Elon Musk, but <laughs> probably Elon Musk. Uh, Elon Musk as well? You said okay. Elon, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is it Elon or Elon? I, I never Elon. know. Elon. 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 Yeah. Eli. And why, Eli. by the way, why are you fascinated? Because I, 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 because he's such a big thinker. Yeah. He's so fascinating. The, the, and, and I would just want to know, like, how do you, you know, like, what do you think about when you wake up in the morning? Like, how are you thinking so much bigger yeah. than everyone else? I mean, there's in, and it just, it just his, the way his mind would work would fascinate me. The way that he executes fascinates me. I just find him, I, th I think I find him fascinating from a business standpoint, from a creative standpoint, I, I'd love to talk to Jay-Z, uh, oh, yes. uh, you know, creativity yes. as well as, um, business yeah. and combining the two. And I know he would have some amazing stories, uh, yeah. as well. And then, um, you know, a guy like Ray Dalio, who's this billionaire, he's the, the billionaire hedge fund from Bridgewater, mm -hmm. um, you know, transparent, you know, this, this radical transparency, this radical honesty, and just kind of delving a little bit deeper and hearing it from him and arguing with this guy and just watching him like, you know, argue and see how it works yeah. um, in, in, in practice. I don't know, Scott, who would you pick right now? Uh, Jeff Bezos. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, Good one. So I'd like to have Jeff there. I would like to have uh, President Trump there. <laughs> All right, at my dinner. Yeah. And um, I think my third choice would probably be um, Mark Cuban. Yeah, that was wow. Well, well, you know, Cuban and Trump are going to go at it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, you got, yeah, you got a little bit of, uh, you know, you got a little bit of tension there. In that's the room. Wild. No, that no sharp sense. knives in the room. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. No, no, we're, we're, we're eating seafood. We're eating, you know, mm. scallops. We're not eating steak. All right. But look, I, I think, I think from, from uh, Jeff Bezos, I'd want to know, like, um, y you know, essentially how, how, how do you go from, you know, an online bookstore, right? I mean, I knew, you know, that he had the whole thing. Maybe he didn't see the whole picture at, at the time he started, right? But he knew it was bigger than big. And when you think about what he, he has grown Amazon into, the, the thing is just massive, right? Like it's just, 
It's massive. We all, we all use it in some fashion, whether we know it or not. I mean, even down to websites, you know, in, in terms of being on his infrastructure, the guy is just, you know, all over the place. And, you know, he's built a platform that really has transformed e-commerce and transformed the world. I mean, you know, just think, like think about everything in your house that comes from Amazon. It's amazing. I would have bought um, my actual house on Amazon if I could have. Yeah, One right. Click. You know, like yeah. the, the guy, the guy is just, you know, it just gets better and better and better and better. And there's no end in sight, you know, like it just, they just keep creating. Yeah. Uh, from from uh, Mark Cuban, I, I think I would like to kind of understand, um, you, you know, ki- kind of what, what he sees um, – what he's looking for, like in companies, right? Like, you know, um, on, on Shark Tank, for example, because he's very vocal in terms of like when he's out, he's out. There's something that he doesn't like, if there's something he doesn't see that he likes, he he's out. I mean, like there's no, there's no gray area. He's either in or he's out. Right. And I think that when you can, when you have that type of a focus, that type of kind of this, I I know this boom, you're off to the races. Right. And then, And then from President Trump, I think I'd like to understand really, um, you know, kind of the the whole concept of thinking big, right? Like, uh, you know, he's he's well known for saying like, you know, if if you're going to think, why not think big? And all of his projects are all huge, right? Like everything in in his life is huge, and you know, he doesn't he doesn't go through and and like, hey, let me try this little deal here. When he's going, he's in, man. Like he. He's building, you know, the tallest skyscraper there is. He's, he's making it great. He's not necessarily trying to make it just mediocre or just kind of test the waters. He's either in or he's out. And uh, so I, I respect that piece of him. And then as a kind of as another side note or something, if him and Cuban get into it about business, I need to change the topic. Then I would really talk to him about kind of um, his, how, how he raised his children in terms of, I mean, they truly are his business partners. And when you look at when you look at how much faith he has in all of his kids, I mean, it's it's amazing to see how he has groomed all of his children. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you can say whatever you want about Trump, but those those kids are you know they're top notch, man. Are, like are pretty pretty solid. Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. pretty solid kids, right? You know, like for growing up, you know, as billionaires. Yeah, like, not bad, not bad. Yeah, so that's who I would have. Those are some great guests, guys. Hmm. So, o- Ozio, can you tell us about a dark period in your life that you went through and how you came out of it and what you learned from it? Yeah. A dark period. You know, one of the things that it was a challenge and, and I was, uh, you know, I was, went through a period where I was living paycheck to paycheck, struggling artists. I was in a band uh, for, for many years. I devoted about 10 years in my 20s uh, just trying to at that time you know it was trying to be a rock star and and get a record label deal which who who needs a record label deal now right it's changed but back then it, it was it was a big deal and i remember doing that and i was i was pretty much putting things on my card i was just i went all in and i had this dream uh, of of making it as a paid musician you know traveling band touring band and would just rack up this credit card debt and got really heavy you know, above ground, which, you know, to over 20,000, just heavy, just, I was paying just equipment, studio room, you, you name it. And I was paying for everything. I was a band leader. So it was one of those things where, um, and then I lost my job and, and couldn't make, you know, got to a point where I couldn't make rent. I couldn't pay for the credit cards um, statements. And it was just really a rough period. And that was a, a moment where I really was a very entrepreneurial moment there guys because I decided to pick up side hustles and and learned uh, I was bartending and then I really got into uh, bartending private events and it was just more bang for the buck I was making some crazy money and I started just funneling this crazy cash flow uh, to pay off my debt and and got out of debt in a year and a half uh, doing that so I came out of that but it was a really dark period it was scary it was scary you know facing the fact that I didn't have money in my account and it was, it was, um, it was very, it was one of those moments where I'm like, I never want to be back in that 
a position again where I can't, you know, make rent, I can't pay these credit cards. And once I got out of debt, it was like, ah, that was a big aha moment because I discovered that I could make money on my own terms. You know, I, I took a skill set that I learned, took it to a different industry, which were, was private events and created a business uh, doing mobile bartending. I guess that's another story. I'm not sure if I, if I ever share that story with you, Mark, but I did that. And that was a really, that was really where I cut my teeth, started learning about business marketing and, and the sales where I really kind of started uh, making some, some serious cash. So that was a really, really dark period, but there was also light at the end of the tunnel and that fact that I really discovered uh, my entrepreneurial bug and really came out of it. Um, and, and I'm okay now. So cause of it, so it, it's uh you know, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So always, uh, when I tell creatives, you know, pick up something that you, you're good at, some, a skill set that you know. There's something in you. Everybody has a skill set. Some people always come up to me and say, well, I don't know what I'm good at. Uh, I said, you know what? I believe there's something you can do. And this is the beautiful thing about this online world, as you know, Scott and Mark, that you can take that now and, and make that into a business. Uh, side hustles is a huge thing. And that's where I'm at right now, guys, is really helping people uh, and I believe it's just a great gateway to entrepreneurship is building, creating that, taking that idea, a hobby, passion, turn it into a side hustle, and then come out of the darkness if you want to become an entrepreneur through that side hustle until you learn and you cut your teeth. And, and there's a lot of things that you'll learn out of it. And um, that's something that I always give credit to. So uh, I'm a big believer in the side hustle. And uh, it got me out of that dark period. All right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. We're, now we're at that point in the podcast, Ozil. Yes. We're going to put you on the spot <laughs> and your mentorship has been great, but we're going to ask you one last question, your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Improving your life, your lives guys. Uh, definitely check out on if you guys have checked it out yet, but it's a, it's a Netflix documentary called minimalism. It's a documentary about the important things. Um, you got to check out. It's one of the most amazing documentaries uh, you will ever see. And it really puts perspective on having enough and being okay with having enough and really scaling down and, and embracing minimalism as a lifestyle. So I'm not sure you guys should have them on the podcast. Uh, I think its name is Josh and I think Ryan. And they run a, a podcast called... Um, the minimalist. And I believe they have a blog, the minimalist.com, I believe. Uh, but I, I'm just inspired. And these are guys that were su completely, they were successful entrepreneurs and they just gave it up to pursue this message and share this message with the world about minimalism. And they just let go of money. They said, you know, F the money, we're going to go ahead and help people um, shed away the, this notion of, of having a lot of money and, and the need to have a lot of money and to have a lot of stuff and, and really uh, pursue the things that, that truly matter, you know, family and the things that you love to do. So uh, highly recommend for all your listeners, check it out, uh, Minimalism, a documentary about the important things. And it's, I think, only available on Netflix. So highly, highly recommend. It was a game changer and put perspective in my life for sure. All right, I've got it right here on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, my, my new fancy iPhone 10. Oh, wow. Which, which what do you think? Which, you I, think? which isn't really very minimalistic. <laughs> Um, like now I'm like ashamed of it. Um, if, if that's the only gadget you have, Mark, if that's the only thing you're just, <laughs> it's, I, it's, it's the only gadget I have. Yeah, okay. I, I actually, uh, I live in the iPhone 10. Um, do you like it, man? By the way? No, I love it. I love it. Okay, it's, okay. it's, it's the best. It's by far the best phone I've ever owned. Okay. It's, it's phenomenal. And the only reason I have it is because Scott Todd had it before me. Oh, Otherwise, well, my life was just fine with the iPhone seven. Cool guy. Yes. Yeah. Scott, <laughs> hey, Mark, but, uh, I'm thinking about getting a, uh, a Samsung note. Uh oh, watch out. Are you serious? <laughs> Mark? <laughs> He's joking. And, no, I'm serious. I've been, I've been on the fence with it. Why wouldn't you get an iPad? I got an iPad. Why would you get a Samsung note then? Yeah, good to question. To replace my iPhone 10. Ooh. You not don't like fan. the iPhone 10 anymore? I like it. I like it. Next year though, I might be switching. I might leave Apple for Samsung because Samsung's had all of this technology that's in the 10 for years, man. 
You know, it's, kind of, it's funny you mentioned that. I was talking to a friend of mine and I've been to having, I've been an Apple user for, for a few years now. I've had, I had the Samsung, I had the Galaxy 4 and enjoyed it. Never had an issue with it. And then I switched to iPhone and I like, and I just, I've been having uh, Apple uh, products ever since. But I, I also have been thinking about making the transition. I know Mark is probably like, no, what are you guys talking about? Uh, but <laughs> I was thinking about that. I, was, I went to Best Buy the other day and I was like, these Samsung Galaxy Notes are pretty nice. I don't know. Yeah, that, that Note, man, I went and looked at it. I was like, man. you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. Mark? Mark, Mark, Mark we, speechless. We, I, uh, speechless. He, put us on, he put us on mute. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, this is, this is like, uh, <laughs> You know, Obi Wan Kenobi saying, "No, I'm I'm kind of toying with the dark side. I don't know <laughs> because that that, that you know that one. lightning thing is pretty cool. I can shoot yeah. lightning out of my fingertips. Enough with this, these these the elegant lightsabers. Side. So that's that's to to, to be determined, Mark. To, to be continued. Right, but for now, go. I'm All I'm right. gonna stick with you on on the Apple side. Yeah, but like, right. here's my Ooh. tip of the week. Yeah. Okay, Mark, check this website out. It's mailcaster.com. It's M-A-I-L-C-A-S-T-R, mailcaster.com. And what's cool about this is it's a, it's a plug-in for, for Gmail, and it okay. creates a signature. You know, like, hey, how's it going? New signature, professional-looking signature. But there's something really, really cool in there, and that is real-time email tracking. So you know, based on this signature, if they're opening your email, whether they got it or not, historical data so that, you know, you can kind of make some better decisions. Like, you know, essentially if you're seeing an email and, and they don't respond to you and you're trying to sell a piece of, piece of land and they don't respond to you and you go back and you look and they opened it, well, then they're kind of telling you something, right? So maybe now you can tweak what you're saying or the way that you approach something to try to get your kind of response rates, close rates up. It's kind of pretty cool. And you know what, reason. you can you can even get the, um, like the pro version or whatever it's called, the, uh, you know, they're upgraded, yes, yeah, like the pro version, for $1.90 a month, $1.90. It's not bad. When you pay it annually. So like less than 25 bucks a, a year. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, but Mixmax okay. does it for free. Yeah, well, you know. Does it give you web <laughs> dashboard reporting? Yes. Oh. Does it give you Does it give you uh, unlimited event tracking? Yeah, Is there support? <laughs> Is there you support? Got it, Scott. You got it. I don't. It's free. Yeah, it's free. Okay, okay. Well, you know what you say, man. You know what you always say. I know. When it's I know. free. How you know they're going to stay in business? I well, they do so have check a free model. All right, I'll check it check out. Mailcaster. Okay. Great, Mailcaster. great tip. Okay. Um. All right, my tip of the week is, you know, learn more about Ozeal, listen to his podcast, um, get some digital marketing uh, tips at thinkozeal, O-Z's and zebra, E-A-L.com, thinkozeal.com. I'll have a link to his site. And, um, you know, Ozeal de Bastos, are we good? We're good, man. Thank you so much for the tip. I, I got, I'm honored, man. I got, I got Mark's tip of the week. So thank yeah, you yeah, for, for dropping that. Much appreciated, man. And and thank you so much for and you and Scott. It was great meeting you. Um, to to be on the show and have an opportunity to be able to share the the no permission needed message with the rest of your listeners. So uh, thank you so much, man. It's an honor. Well, thank you. And I, I don't, I can't speak for Scott, but I know just talking to you and 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 spending time with you, I do feel a little cooler, even though <laughs> you know. I'm a huge geek. Uh, I do feel like some of that cool is going to be rubbing off on me. What about you, Scott? I'm, I'm Mr. Cool, man. I might just have to, uh, you know, I don't know. Take us some breakdance classes, maybe? Maybe start breakdance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I, I always like, I, I try to impress my wife sometimes by doing the, the worm. There you go. That's and uh, she just laughs at me when I'm like crawling around on the floor in pain. But <laughs> I just I just popped and locked while he there was There we talking. go. There we go. <laughs> So popped and locked. Everybody's seen the movie breaking. Come on, man. Everybody. Is, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Turbo knows that. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Good stuff. You know, many a fight has been uh, avoided just through the, the power of calling someone out in dance. Yeah. Have you, I don't think you break dancing came out of like actually in the Bronx uh, where there was gangs there that were just kind of beating each other up. And a DJ started playing some music on a record, and that's where the DJ came from. And then 
these uh, thugs, these gang members decided to drop down their, their knives and, and started uh, fighting each other through, through this form called break dancing. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, I'm, I'm glad. Thank, thank goodness for break dancing. It's, it saved the New York City back in the late 70s and, and early 80s, at least some parts anyway. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I want to remind the listeners, the only way we're going to get guests as cool as Ozeal is if you do us three things. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. If you have a note and you need cash, go to tlfolio.com and learn more there and get, you know, sell 12 to 18 months of that cash flow, get your money out, redeploy it, and then get that passive income to revert back to you in 12 to 18 months. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone again and uh, let freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. All right.